Okay, today on the bench we have something that came a really, really long way to get here. Uh, I had someone from Ireland <laughs> contacted me and asked if I could take a look at their uh, Cobra 2000 GTL frequency counter clock module. Um, it uh, apparently had gone, shall we say, batshit crazy. <laughs> apparently, I guess it had taken a lightning strike. Um, and you may notice there's a lot of parts laying off to the left-hand side. Well, yep. <laughs> it looks like it either took a lightning strike or a power line surge or something. Because, um, yeah, it, it it got... Now, some of those ICs may actually be good, but after you get halfway through it, you know, you troubleshoot. Okay, bad IC. You replace the one IC. It still doesn't work. You get to the next one. You troubleshoot, you know, you troubleshoot the next section of the circuit. Um, same thing. Okay, another bad IC. Got voltages where I'm not supposed to. Don't have voltages where I'm supposed to. Signals aren't right. Signals are missing. So you pull that one out. You replace it. You turn it back on. Still doesn't work. You get to the next one. It's bad. You know, after you get halfway through it, it's <laughs> honestly, you know it's going to be a, a lot of bad ICs. It's just going to be cheaper to replace them all than to spend the money for me to sit there and diagnose each individual one. You go to the next one, oh, it's bad. It's just very time-consuming. Um, so like I said, I did some troubleshooting, got partway through it, and it was like, yeah, it's, it's just got serious problems. It wiped out both of the front-end uh, FETs, that's these little guys. Um, I say front-end um, it's yeah. You, know, you can think of it as a receiver. Um, so it's got two signals come into it: a 34 and seven seven point eight megahertz signals, or in the rain in those ranges. Um, so it has two preamplifier circuits. And there's F, uh, the 34 megahertz section here, and then the seven point eight megahertz section here, and they each have their own little transformers, tunable transformers. Um, and even one of those was bad, but. Like I say, you get to a certain point, it's just replace them all. It's gonna, you're going to spend a tenth of the time doing something you're going to end up doing anyhow, replacing them all. <laughs> so that's what I did. Uh, replaced all the guys. Now, the capacitors had actually already been replaced in this, but whoever did it, they left the leads like this long on all of the electrolytic capacitors, and they were sticking way up off the board. I mean, just kind of flopping around, and yeah, it's, especially something like a frequency counter, you want to try and keep the components, you know, just like they were originally, uh, you know, especially leads on stuff, you know, so down close to this, you know, the component down on the board as far as you can get it, because those leads can act like antennas, depending where they are in a circuit. But yes, I just went ahead, and, and again, you're going to have to desolder them to do that, and they were a bunch of mismatched different brands and whatnot, so it now has all Michicon uh, electrolytic capacitors in it. So, as you can see, it's sitting here working, so um, to get one of these to work out, I'm going to take off my statics wrist strap here, I'm done working on it. I don't have to worry about zapping anything anymore. Uh, and that's one thing, be careful when you work on stuff like this. Uh, if you're putting components in this, a lot of these ICs, they're very static sensitive, just like these. These are not tr your normal everyday bipolar transistors. These are FETs, or field effect transistors. Very, very static sensitive. So anytime you're working on this kind of stuff, make sure you're wearing a static strap. You know, ideally be using, like here, uh, you know, ESD mat. But, uh, so basically how these work, like I say, they have two, there's actually two inputs. Now for AM mode, you actually only have one signal comes in. That's going to be the one in the 34, actually between 34 to 35 megahertz. So actually if we look at the service manual here, you can see an AM receive and transmit. You have this, this is the synthesizer output. So it's between 34.765 megahertz up to 35.205 megahertz. Um, now in sideband, you can see we have different frequencies, but then that's when this other line comes into play. So there's actually two frequencies being put into this. Like I say, there's also a 7.8 megahertz. Um, so what I have is the signal generator right there, putting out 
a 34.765. If we look at the manual here, you can see 34 for channel 1, we have 34.765. And then I the the 7.8 megahertz. You can see right here. Now I have that output turned on, but I can turn that off. And then if we look down, actually do I have, yes, I actually had it in sideband. <laughs> so you can see it's still registering the frequency. Even without, you can see the little green light is off there. The output is turned off. So the only thing being put into this right now is the 34.765 megahertz signal. Um, now, you'll notice when I switch to upper sideband. So what I have here is basically the only thing the customer sent was the module itself. Um, I have just these pulled out of an old parts chassis, and I, I rigged these up as a test fixture. Uh, so I can work on these out of the radio. I don't even need the radio. Like I said, this customer sent only the frequency counter module. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it would cost to send a Cobra 2000, uh, you know, the whole way from Ireland here. So, you know, this can be put in a small box. But uh, this way, this is the this is the display panel, you know, with the buttons for the clock, the switches, out of a, an old Cobra 2000. Um, now, this is not the original uh, mode selector switch. I just used a, a normal three-position rotary switch here. But I wired it up just like it would be if it was actually in the radio. Um, this little wire here, actually, you can see that's not attached to anything. Um, that one is actually used in transmit. So actually when your radio switches into transmit, uh, 8 volts is applied to this. Now what that's for is if you have this in auto, let me actually move the camera down. So if you have this, the switches, because you can set this to time, uh, counter, or auto. If you put it in auto, it'll display the time. But as soon as you key the microphone, it switches over to frequency counter. And what switches the frequency counter on is that 8 volts. So if you apply, if you put it in so it's in uh, automatic, you'll see time until you key the microphone and then it switches over to a frequency counter. But, uh, so anyhow, so you can see in AM, that's all we need is that 34.765 megahertz signal so that we can actually display the channel, 26965. But you can see when we switch into upper sideband, hmm, something's not right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not 26965 anymore. So if we look at the the manual here, you can see actually in upper sideband, the radio, the output of the synthesizer will actually be 34.7665. So let's change this to 34. Point, what did I say? 766. Five megahertz. Now, also, let's sit back down here so I can get the service manual flipped around. You'll see that there's also the when you're in upper sideband, your radio is actually producing a 7.8015 megahertz signal. So if we put that in in the second channel, 7.80 one five megahertz and we turn channel two on so we have both signal generators are on now 34.7665 coming out of the channel one and 7.8015 coming out of channel two if we look down here at the frequency counter aha we have 26965 just like it should be so that's that's how that works so I thought I'd just show that really quick um, yeah there Load of ICs over here. Yeah, this is honestly, I think the well, no, actually, it's not the worst I've ever seen. Actually, I still own <laughs> the worst I've ever seen. I had one sent to me one time, it was so butchered, it was basically to the point of it's just not repairable. Some it had been hacked up, and the circuit traces were so bad because, as you can see, this is a double sided circuit board. So, yeah, someone had. On that one, someone had really screwed up the board, which, but that's fine. I don't mind keeping modules like that because some of these ICs, yeah, that's what they came out of was old parts chassis like that because you have to remember some of these ICs in this thing, they're custom. Um, 
the one for the the clock I think it is uh, I actually just grabbed a schematic here oh where the heck are we here just be patient with me for a second <laughs> Oh, where is that blasted IC at? And yes. So as you can see, this is half of the schematic actually, but right there, get it to focus, it says microcomputer. So yes, that was actually a... And that's not the kind you can reprogram or you know, something like that. These are what they got, I think they call them, what, masked... Um, so they were actually, they left the, the, you know, the semiconductor manufacturer, but they were custom, you know, programmed by the, the actual chip manufacturers. So yeah, when one of those goes bad, you're screwed. Unless you have a parts module, you ain't going to have one to stick in it. So actually, that should be this one right here. Yeah, that's that little guy. And you're never going to focus on there with all that stuff in the background. There you go, TMS-1000. But, yeah, so that's the microcomputer, <laughs> as they call it. But, uh, yeah, so there are no replacements for this. So when one of these goes bad, the only place you're ever going to get one is out of a Cobra 2000 frequency counter module. So that's why I hold on to old parts chassis like that. But uh, there you go. So there's a, another one successfully brought back to life. Um, and just a, like I say, a quick overview on how they work. And so, you know, if we switch back to it, it'd be AM mode, you can see now the display's reading all wonky again. Well, that's because our 34 megahertz signal <laughs> is not correct. So we'd need to go back to 34765. And actually, we can turn channel 2 off. And if we look down here, you can see we're back to 26.965 again. So, and then since I turned off channel 2, again, you'll see if I switch over to sideband, the display's reading the actual frequency that's coming in right there, 34.765. So that's another thing. Uh, that's actually what, what this module is basically doing. So right now, we have 34.765 being set into the module, and there's no 7.8 megahertz. You can see I turned that channel off. So, in sideband, when you turn, when or when you know it's sensing that 7.8 megahertz, now it's going to depend if it's upper or lower sideband. It will either be actually 7.79, uh, what, 7.79, uh, what, 8.5, I think. So i got to look at the damn book here. Yeah, seven nine eight five, or set like we had, like I had shown with upper side band, seven point eight zero one five. But key here is, we just take a calculator here, real quick. Matter of fact, so, get this critter turned on. So we'll take that thirty four point seven six five, thirty four point seven six five, and if we subtract seven point eight megahertz from that you can see 26.965. So that's where that 7.8 comes into play. That's actually just basically being removed from that, and that's what the, the counter then displays. That's, so that's, that's why it needs that 7.85. It actually uses that in sideband because the, the synthesizer output changes along with the offsets, so it needs all of that information. You know, basically, the counter needs all of that information so it knows what to calculate or not that it's actually calculating. It's it's a dumb. It, yeah, I'd call this a a dumb computer. But uh, you know that's how it actually comes up with twenty six nine six five. So it's just subtracting the uh, seven point eight megahertz, basically that frequency from the thirty four thirty four to thirty five megahertz signal that's coming in through the other line and that's what's displayed. So there you go, another Cobra 2000 GTL counter module.